Hi there. Let's talk about 1031 exchanges and DSTs. I'm Don Meredith with Tactical Income and here with my co-host, our commercial broker, go-to guy, Tom Koss. How are you, Tom? Good. Nice to see you, Don. How are you doing? I'm doing just great. There's a lot going on this year in real estate. I want to discuss exactly what a DST is, a Delaware Statutory Trust. Uh, I get so many questions on it. And, you know, I've been working in this field for 20 plus years with Delaware Statutory Trust. What is it? Anyhow, it's a legal entity set up in Delaware to hold title to real estate. If you are planning or being an investor in real estate, knowing about the DST options, Tom, as you have pointed out, adds to some flexibility and increases your options, doesn't it? It definitely does. I think it's important to note that just because it's a Delaware entity doesn't mean you have to own property in Delaware. It's for the nationwide uh, ownership. Our agenda today is 10 reasons investors are jumping into DSTs. And we'll talk about Kiplinger's new article, uh, the 10 reasons people are jumping into DSTs. Performance during COVID shutdown. We're all a little COVIDed out, aren't we, Tom? But it, it really was a tremendous shock to business. So I want to talk about that at least a little bit. We're definitely coded out and there's subliminal stress, uh, I think throughout our um, you know, society here and it manifests itself in subtle ways, but definitely coded out. And I think people are ready to get active again and do some business and get out and make it happen. I think so, I think so. So we'll talk a little bit about that to get your take on things. And uh, there's been several articles, Forbes, Wealth Management, Kiplinger, I mean, you know, 20 years in this industry, and it took this long for him to start uh, really paying attention. So we'll, we'll talk about the industry, the different asset types. And let's talk about the different asset types that were affected in COVID, because the, overall, the, the DST industry was a pretty darn formidable, uh, impressive player. Well, if you, look um, at those ass, if you look at those asset types, uh, the ones that DST were invested in had the least amount of impact from the COVID. They really did. And they learned a lot from 2009, uh, or real estate as a whole did, didn't they? Uh, so, uh, it, Tom, here's a list of some things that we talk about with investors. And so we really want to get a feel for where they're coming from. And these are all important points. Uh, you were the co-author of our book, The DST Revolution, uh, 1031 Exchange into Retirement Mode. And it was only a little unusual because I'm a financial guy, you're a commercial uh, broker, and, uh, and I think we came out with a pretty good uh, book. It's not, it's not like an academic text. I mean, it, it moves pretty fast. No, definitely. And I was delighted to you know, help you co-author that book. And you know, my interest in DSTs is part of because of the, the fact that they make an excellent exit strategy for real estate investors, among other things. And uh, when I read your first uh, first draft uh first edition i was i enjoyed it very much and you were rewriting a second one and asked me if i'd give you some input on a few chapters and next thing you know i'm the co-author and i think it worked out great well your contribution would put a whole different spin on it um what i'm showing is our website at tacticalincome.com it's a virtual library for dst and 1031 exchange and j just go there if you want detail uh it's it, i've been told it's a pretty wonderful site uh tacticalincomeforlife.com. So, Tom, tell us, tell us your views on what's going on in real estate right now and uh, what, what are your thoughts? Well, on the uh, residential side, which I have some experience in, uh, single family homes, that market is red hot, uh, condominiums as well. That's a function of low interest rates, which has driven the, the prices up. The costs don't haven't moved that much because the mortgage payments are so low, therefore the prices go up. So there's a red hot market for single family homes. Uh, multifamily similarly is a dramatic uh, increase in activity. Cap rates have dropped, values have gone up because of the shortage of supply. On the commercial side, uh, office space, office buildings, a little bit softer because of the COVID-19 and uh, tend to work at home alone. Some retail centers are having issues uh, industrial and the transportation sector is doing great. So that, that's kind of the, the big picture and anticipate activity in all sectors to improve the next uh, 12 months or so. 
Why did you end up, uh, you kind of touched upon that, but why did you end up writing the book with me? What, what was your interest? I mean, you're a commercial broker. You've had a lot of options for investors in the past to 1031 exchange for your buyers, for your sellers. Uh, what was your interest in, in the DST for your, usually your older, your older investors? Well, the, on the, on the DST uh, entity, it's, it's a great option for someone that's doing a tax deferred exchange and, and for some reason are unable to find a suitable up leg exchange property. So it's like a fail safe. And if an investor knows that if I have trouble finding a property that I can own myself, I can trade into a, a DST. I've, co I've completed my exchange and I have not incurred any tax liability. So it, it's kind of a, a insurance policy, which what that does is it, it will empower an investor to go ahead and take the risk to make the, make the exchange. And usually that's what happens, but in the event that they aren't able to, then they get in a DST, which ultimately find out is, is a passive and yet high yield return investment. What do you think about the real estate market overall? I mean, uh, it, it's really heated up all over the country. I mean, uh, you're getting some, you know, you're getting that hockey stick chart on virtually every sector. Why have the home markets and also investment real estate and multifamily, which is a big DST component asset, why have multifamilies done so well? Well, that's because of two fundamental factors. Number one, the shortage of housing supply and also the cost of money. So the cost to borrow is so much lower than it was several years ago that an investor doesn't need as high of uh, yield per se on the investment to get a great return. And I spoke with an institutional quality investor last week, and they're looking at capitalization rates going in at three and a half percent on apartments, which is unbelievable uh, because they know with the low cost of money, they can still get a good return. So that's what's driving that market. On the home side, if you can, if you can borrow money at two and a half percent, imagine how much more you can afford to borrow than if the rate was five percent. And that's what's driving home values. Do you, see, do you see things changing in the near term? You know, I know you're a great, you're a data person. And uh, I saw you the other day reading a book called The Myth of the Rational Market. I mean, so you're, you're a voracious reader of the industry. So, yeah, well, forecasting the, that, the myth of the rational market, one of the key uh, messages I gleaned from that was that you cannot predict more than two years ahead what might happen. Uh, because of, because of economic changes, uh, world events, whatever. So you know, in the near term, uh, the next 12 months should see more of the same. Uh, you know, increase in values, uh, a lot of activity in the investment sector, and that should go on. But as interest rates climb, then that'll cool off. And it's kind of like a like a big ship. Once you get momentum going, it keeps moving when you turn the engines off. So that market may go past the point where it should be cooling off, but it won't. And then we'll see a drop. And that could oh. be two to three years. Okay. So when working with a property owner or investor, how do you find out the best plan of action? What's your MO? How do you do that? Uh, I try to I ask him what their best case scenario is, you know, what, what their plan is for the next few years, um, that type of thing. Do they want to own, own more property? Do they want to have something that's less management intensive? Would they like to refinance and stay where they are? That type of thing. Try to get an understanding of what their big picture is globally and also uh, microly. You know, a lot of people don't realize that DSTs, uh, what they are. And Verizon Wireless, their headquarters is a DST, Delaware Statutory Trust Property. Fractional investors, AT&T headquarters, same thing. Uh, I think the more investors hear about DSTs, uh, in fractional investing in a DST, uh, they realize it's a pretty darn formidable force these days. Well, I agree, uh, Donna. What's interesting is that a lot of that there's some reluctance to give up control, quote unquote, control by investing in a DST. But that's not that's only one step more than having outsourcing your management function on your real estate. I mean, it's quite similar. Well, I mean, you know, fractional ownership, you're right. It's a control thing. And, you know, it's a challenge to anybody's, any investor's intuition. But, you know, you have to look, it's been around for 20 plus years now, and the legacy is pretty darn strong. And no, I agree. And, and there's a liquidity component that's not, it's not in the moment, but within five to seven years, typically those DSTs will liquidate. 
and the investor is back in the saddle, relatively speaking, to what they do with their, their equity, whether reinvest in that or, or take it as a capital gain or buy something on their own. Yeah, I think the, the, the big thing is for older property owners is with the DSC, you're not the one banging on the door you know, with, with a problem tenant or, or a number of issues, right? That's right. You know, I heard, uh, uh, I, I get privy, uh, privy to all kinds of uh, conversations. Uh, I thought of one just now, the boardroom uh, last week, I'm sitting in the boardroom and there's two partners. They've been investing together for years and they liquidated a property five years ago. One did two DSTs on his 1031 exchange for his half, the other bought three properties. And so now fast forward, here we are sitting in the boardroom and the, the DST has gone full cycle and his property in Florida, he's in San Diego's property in Florida has gone full cycle. And one partner to the other is going, you've been running around like a chicken with your head cut off with these properties. And ever since I did a DST, I virtually have no more real estate. I'm doing nothing. Well, and, what's, inter what's interesting, Don, about that is that the person that maintained ownership had a, had a, his life was reactivity, reacting to activity, whereas the person that was in a DST was proactive. So he, he would create his own activities. I mean, so it's an interesting dynamic. Well, it's something to think about. It doesn't mean that he was wrong, but I'm um, just you have to uh, it, when you have an option on the table not to be working, that is so formidable. Uh, you, you've you got to take a second look, don't you? Oh, definitely. But there are some some people that that enjoy that process and it keeps them active and busy. And and those are the people that that hold indefinitely. And then when they die, their heirs get the properties. But the ones that have maybe a different perspective, they can trade into DST. And then their time is their own, and they can seek activities that are you know more productive for them as individuals and to to other people. Yeah. Well, you bring up a good point because some people are inherently great managers, they enjoy the process. It's not work to them, they love it. And they, we both know people like this. However, things could change. You can get older uh, and maybe all of a sudden not love it or your spouse is saying, hey, you know, we're in our late sixties or older and uh, you know, let's cool it a little bit. You well, know? It's interesting, I can equate that to travel and you know, my hometown is Spokane and I'll drive up there a couple of times a year. It's a long drive and uh, a few weeks ago, I flew up there and I thought, gee, flying is so much better because it takes th three hours instead of 20 hours. So I mean, that's not dissimilar to investing in a DST versus having your own property. I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting because you give up control, but it's an easier, tr easier trip. Well, maybe there's no right or wrong, but one thing we do know is that uh, I've, been doing, I've been doing this for 25 years in the DST. I'm very proud of the industry. And uh, I, I just think it's a great option for you know, real estate people, for investors all the way around. Uh, and, and getting into the acquisitions is a whole nother conversation. I mean, they're just great ac acquisitions. Class A, Class B, self-storage, uh, medical properties. Uh, you know, there's some areas that, you know, we stay away from. There's some, there are some weak assets out there, but, you know, then you get into cap rates and cash flow and, and what are the great DSTs and, and, and what we stay away from. So, well, you know, you know. The, the product type, excuse me, the product type for institutional, for the DSTs is institutional quality real estate. And commercial real estate brokers, you know that term, probably everybody does. That means it's the finest, the best, the least amount of risk. So you're looking at institutional grade investment deals vis a vis the DST platform. Well, Tom, I want to thank you today. I know you're a busy guy. And, uh, you're really well known as your, I know you as just your, your math abilities on the spot. And I've seen some of the reports that you do for investors, very impressive stuff to me. And uh, if anybody wants to give you a quick call, uh, whether they're in your area, you're a Washington state guy, but you're living in San Diego, correct? Oh yeah, I live in San Diego County, been here for uh, over 30 years. Right, right. So how can anyone get in touch with you? Give me a call on my, my direct line is area code 619-772-7738. Or you can email me at tom at camrealtyadvisors.com. Either way, I'd be delighted to hear from you. Okay, great, Tom. Well, we'll, we'll see you back hopefully in a couple of months and 
we'll uh, we're it's April 2021. We'll see we'll see how things are going. Sounds great, Don. Thank you very much. It was okay. Good. Thanks, thanks, Tom. I'm Don Meredith uh, signing off with Tom Koss and we'll see you next time.